Hi, so I'm going to talk through um, a piece of work that I had from a student and why I gave that student a distinction. OK, so this student decided to investigate the time taken for a drug in different coating to dissolve in water and in stomach acid. This was the title of their project, but from this they had to come up with a hypothesis that could be tested. That this was their hypothesis. Gel coated capsules will dissolve faster than enteric coated tablets, and enteric coated tablets will dissolve faster at pH 6 than pH 1. Both these can be tested. Through using the methodology, it is possible to see whether the capsules dissolve faster than the tablets, and those particular tablets, which pH they dissolve faster at and therefore determine whether the hypothesis can be accepted, i.e. proven to be true, or rejected. That is what you need to think when you write your hypothesis. Can it be tested? It's not a title, it's something that can be tested using your experiment. This student decided to give an abstract. Now this isn't necessary, but you can choose to do it if you like. In, there, in this abstract, they just gave a very brief description about what they were going to be doing. Um, but they still provided some uh, references, as you can see here. And they also ensured that for any long words that they were going to use later on in the text, they highlighted the abbreviation here. And therefore, they did not have to then type out this long word um, in future writing. They could just use the abbreviation as they did here. The student then decided to go on and talk about the introduction, um, as talk about the types of tablets that you can buy. So the types of tablets being tablets, capsules and granules. Again, providing referencing citations. They gave a little bit of history explaining you know, that this practice of providing drugs in different formats has been practiced for over 150 years. Again, they showed um, abbreviations alongside the long words. And they explained the different, um, you know, this was like gave an explanation between instant release drugs, extended release and target release drugs. Here you can see I've highlighted that they used uh, the citation. And here again, that they have highlighted the fact that they used, uh, showed the abbreviation. They then started to talk about um, what some of, or sort of define some other words. So in here they talked about dissolution of a drug and what that means. So what we mean by dissolving or dissolution rate. So they gave that explanation. When you write in this, you have to write it assuming the reader doesn't have the background knowledge that you do. The next piece that they went on to was talking a little bit about the biology. So talking about how um, the drugs are actually absorbed in the small intestine and therefore the difference between the pHs in the small intestine compared to the stomach, for instance, and how this then can have an effect on how the drugs dissolve. The student then went on to explain about what they meant by the different coatings. So, here we can see his explanation with lots of references about enteric coatings. Please note, they haven't just given one reference, they've given several, but they haven't repeated themselves over and over again with the same, the same explanation. They've summarised what enteric coating means into one short paragraph, but actually added the references in at the relevant points. Here, they've then gone on to explain what film coating means and hard gel capsules. Again, 
summarising in one paragraph, but showing that they've read and got that source of information from several different places. They've then gone on after explaining and giving the background behind the biology, behind the different types of tablets, they then started to talk about the different types of methods they're going to look at to test those tablets. So they started to talk about dissolution testing. And they've talked about how the medium they're going to use, whether water would be suitable or whether because it's going to be representing, for instance, the small intestine, whether they should add emulsifiers such as biosalts or um, surfactants such as sodium lauryl sulfate to help dissolve the drug um, in that medium. They then talked about why, for instance, in vivo uh, testing should, you know, probably wouldn't be suitable. Um, so the, you know, this is a method that they've obviously read about, but decided that this isn't suitable because it's inappropriate or, or, or could be classed as unethical because the volunteers may have to assume drugs for no reason. So they haven't dismissed it um, or you know, not bothered to talk about it. They've actually uh, commented on it and um, made, drawn a conclusion. They then talked about a method, uh, a separate method called the Woods Rotating Disc. And they've talked about this Providing some, again, some references, giving an explanation behind how it works. And from that, they've been able to then go on and talk about some of, some of the equipment that they would have to use alongside that and the accuracy of that equipment. Now, for, for, to achieve the distinction, this is the sort of thing that I'd be looking for. You know, she's talked about the resolution of that equipment and how using a digital thermometer would be better than a liquid thermometer. Also talked about the stirring of the um, of the solution using a magnetic stirrer to help provide a more accurate outcome and to help avoid any human error. As there's a second hypothesis. Um, and you don't have, you know, you only have to test one, but this student happened to decide to do two um, because the student was particularly in interested in enteric coated tablets. Um, they decided to look at um, the different pHs. OK, and so again, put in some description about what would be required. They also mentioned some of the equipment that they would need to use and talked about how many times they'd be repeating the, the experiment. No, they haven't given a step-by-step -step method at this point. It's not required. You can do if you want, and some students decided to at this point, but it isn't required for assignment A. What is required is that you demonstrate that you have thought about, looked at different methods, evaluated them, You've looked at their limitations. You have looked into the background behind your project and explained you know, the background behind your project. Um, and you have demonstrated so that good scientific understanding, a good scientific review of the literature, summarised it, not just repeated bits and pieces and you know, sort of like cut and cut and paste from those those articles, but you've actually brought it together in your own words. The student has provided citations throughout her assignment. She's then linked those to the references and provided the title of the person who, uh, who was the author with the date and then where it can be accessed. OK, so you can see, for instance, this one, the citation was Cummings et al. 2001. This is the full uh, author list. This is the full um, actual title of that piece, title of the journal, its volume number, um, its page number and the date, 
and then a re uh, the actual uh, HTTPS or UR URL um, reference to be able to access that. Please, although this student got a distinction, there is still a couple of errors within their reference list, which was highlighted at the time. So for instance, here, rather than give the page number or the, pa the website uh, page of the website, they've just copied the link, hence why you've got all these percentages. So this is incorrect referencing. My expectation, this was allowed because um, it was only happening in a couple of places, but my expectation would be for assignment B that I would not see this in their reference list. You can see again it happened here, but then all the years are correctly uh, written. <laughs>